Welcome back to another edition of Ariel Meets. I'm Ariel Hawani. That is Paul Heyman. We're at the Crypto.com Arena here in Los Angeles. The day after WrestleMania, Monday Night Raw is going on. This man is very busy, kind enough to give us some time. Paul, how are you? How are you? Good to see you Haven't again. Haven't we done Ariel Meets already with Paul Heyman? Yes. So you've met? We've met. So, so it's like now this is like a, what would you We say? meet again. Rekindle, Ariel rekindles the friendships. You're the first repeat in-person guest in the history of this little series. And well, I should be. Yes. I appreciate you doing this. Wow. I know it's been a very busy time. How about that chat that we had a couple of days ago? How about it? Yeah, it was a little tense. No, it's okay. But it was good, and he ended up uh, giving us a prediction and a spoiler, Roman yes. Reigns did. He won on Sunday. He defeated Cody Rhodes. What did you think of the match? Loved it. People were surprised. Well, direct question, direct answer. Yes. You know, that, that's like saying, hey, do you know what time it is? And they go, 4.30. No, do you know what time it is? Yes, I do. You, you, know, you haven't been in depositions a lot, have you? No, I have not. You know, I, I have I'll not. consider this one of them. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, people were surprised. People were shocked by the finish. In, 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 you know, in the long run of great matches that he's had, where would you rank that one? That was an incredible match, and the ending to me was great because it was unpredictable, right? Didn't see it coming. Where would you rank it? I don't know. I haven't had a chance to digest it yet. I, uh, um, I like the fact that everyone walks in now thinking this is the last title defense. You know, and I, I experienced this before with, with something I had a hand in ending, which was The Undertaker's undefeated streak at WrestleMania. And every year you sat there and you said, oh, no, this is it. And during the match, the audience is actually an anticipating and, and salivating for this to be the moment that they get to witness the historical three count on The Undertaker to which, to which the streak would finally end. And then, of course, when Undertaker would defend the streak, they'd sit there and go, oh, yeah, I don't want to see this. And I can't wait to the next chapter. And, and then it finally ended. And, you know, the audience was shocked because they thought they would see it, they thought they would see it, they thought they would, no, they didn't get to see it, and this was year after year after year, and then they finally got to see it. And I think that's the same thing with Roman Reigns' title defenses now. You, you hope this is the one, you think this is the one, you, you're sure this is the one, you watch the match happening and you go, you know this is the one, and then it turns out not to be the one. Oh man, I can't wait to see the next chapter. And the response tonight to Cody Rhodes which was louder than the response last week to Cody Rhodes, which was a response more passionate tonight for Cody Rhodes, which was a response of an audience that believes in Cody Rhodes this week more than they did last week when they hung their hopes and their dreams on him. And he didn't disappoint them. We disappointed them. We took that away from Cody Rhodes. Roman Reigns took that away from Cody Rhodes and the audience, and they blame Roman Reigns for it, and they appreciate how close Cody came, and they know now, they know, the next time Cody Rhodes steps in the ring with Roman Reigns, this will be the one. That's the business. That's the business at its very best. That's promotion at its very best. That's storytelling at its very best. That's what you want. You want the challenger to come out a bigger star than he would have been if he had won the championship because then where do you go from there? What's the story to tell? Now you know the story. It's Cody's redemption. He's coming back from what was just taken from him, from the defeat that he suffered that he didn't deserve to have to have inflicted upon him. What do you say to people who say last night was too perfect? Should have, should have pulled the trigger last night. That was the one. Maybe Cardiff wasn't the one. Maybe Montreal wasn't the one. But this was the one. We'll be hearing this all summer long, won't we? Oh, oh, oh! This is oh, it's perfect. The stars are aligned. Here it is. It has to happen now. But we've been hearing this the whole time. We, well, I was hearing this two years ago. I, I heard it last last summer at SummerSlam with Brock. I heard it, it at the Royal Rumble with Kevin Owens. I certainly heard it in Montreal with with Sammy. Did hear it in Cardiff as well with Drew McIntyre. And, and I, I heard it uh, two SummerSlams ago with John Cena. Oh, this is where John Cena gets number 17. Oh, wouldn't it be perfect if he beats Roman Reigns for it? Oh my God, this is it. John Cena becomes the most decorated heavyweight champion of all time. Perfect, everything's in line for it. Of course it's in line for it. That's how you make a challenger. Uh, if the challenger's like, yeah, they, I guess this would be okay. Well, nobody's gonna buy that. Oh, this is it. 
It's perfect. It, it has to happen now. That's the promotional business. And so at this point, do you think we are leading towards a rematch, whether or not he wins or not? Is that the best move, or is the best move to make people wait for it, want it, desire it, but go in a different direction? I think whichever is the biggest box office. If, if the biggest box office dictates, let's get to it right now, this moment, tonight, well, we would do it, but we've already sold out the crypto arena tonight, so yeah. that's not the biggest box office. If, if it would dictate, let's do it at the very next premium live event, well, okay. If, if it would dictate, let's do it in, in London at the stadium, okay. If, if it would dictate, hey, let's go get a Cowboy Stadium again and do it there, okay. It's, it's you go for the biggest box office. It's, it, it's a business. And the business is to sell tickets and streaming and, and, it's, and sponsorships, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. When will people be at their peak of the desire to see Cody challenge again for the championship to such a degree that they're willing to pay the most money to see it happen. When you heard the pop for Sammy and KO on Sunday, yeah. and the one on Saturday when they won, but for me, like the one when they crashed, that was deafening. Yeah. How does that make you feel? Because you're a big part of that pop. You, you helped make that pop happen. Well, I mean, a year ago, you know, Sammy Zayn was, was being body slammed by Wee Man, <laughs> running into a five foot plastic hand, losing to Johnny Knoxville at WrestleMania. And this year he is one of the uncontroverted biggest stars on the entire planet in this genre. And again, when he comes out, my God, the reaction to him. We had a big part of that. He, he got that rubbing up against us and coming up against us. Kevin Owens too, hot, hotter now this year than he was last year in the main event of night one against Stone Cold Steve Austin. Holy cow. What have we done here? We have found a sweet spot. We have found a formula that truly allows these personalities to show more of themselves than they have been allowed to show in the past. And in that, in that opening up of these personas, we have now allowed the audience to fall in love with them even more than they ever have before. You've been in this business a very long time. You're, you're and many would say too long. No, I would say you, I mean, I hope you have at least you know a couple decades left, but on a day like today, surreal for you? The news that came out? No. Did no. you ever think you would see this day? Yes and no. Um, Vince McMahon loves every micro moment of, of his life because the most passionate relationship he's ever had in his entire existence is with building the WWE business and the brand that goes along with the business. But it's the thrill of building the business. He, he is truly the ultimate disruptor. He disrupted the professional wrestling industry to the point where it's now called sports entertainment. And then every time he found a, a niche pattern, every time he found what he was looking for in the industry, he, he then disrupted that whole game plan and went to something different. Well, making hundreds of millions of dollars on pay-per-view, he went streaming. We have this whole concept about streaming, then he makes the television license fees the true bread and butter of, of the company. Then he builds the stock to such an extent that the company's valued at nine, nine and a half billion dollars. He's constantly disrupting his own business plan and marketing plan. So to that degree, you know, strategic partnerships, mergers, et cetera, et cetera, I could see Vince doing whatever he felt was going to build this to being bigger, better, stronger, more resilient to any kind of storms that could happen in the future, the collapse of television itself, streaming is, is taken down by, by, uh, by a foreign government who is, who's infiltrated the systems of the United States, whatever happens. 
that we're going to survive and we're going to thrive. So could I see that? Yeah. This particular move? No. But that's what makes Vince Vince. I mean, that's, that's why he has a company that was valued at nine point something billion dollars, because he will see things that we common folk don't. Uh, two last quick things. Who stands to gain more from this relationship, WWE or UFC? You know both very well. You know, the, the promoter in me, yes. the marketer in me, uh, and, 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 and the political fixer backstage in me would love to say, well, it's the fans who stand to gain the most. It's, it's the audience who stands to gain the most. I don't know. I mean, we're, we're not even 24 hours into the deal. So I really, I can't tell. I mean, there's going to have to be maneuverings. I mean, that's just, you know, the nature of the evolution of a conglomerate. So I don't know yet who stands who stands the game the most. I I I I truly don't. Hopefully, and the real answer, hopefully, that is the, is shareholders. Mm. But I also I, I I I can't vouch for something that I don't have my arms around, and I don't even think that the principal players have their arms around this yet. It's something that you have to figure out as you go along. Finally, I'd be remiss if I don't ask you about Conor McGregor's tweet to you. I think he said that he would. Uh, if you got too lippy, he would break your jaw in three places, and I think he called you a grandpa as well. Yeah, your well, I'm not, I'm not a grandfather, but I, I appreciate, I, I appreciate the fact that I'm, I'm old enough to be, number one, and and that I'm still thriving on top. I would like to see if Conor McGregor at 57 is still thriving at the very top of his entire industry. Number one, we'll see if he's even relevant. At 50, we'll see if he even lives to 57 with his lifestyle, number two. Number three, it's not that he tweeted to me, I picked the fight with him. Let's, let's, let's be honest about this. He, as a Roman Reigns wannabe, did the Paul Heyman style, you know, title on each shoulder and, you know, and gave a shout out to himself, of course, he did. You know, the ultimate self-promoter in Conor McGregor, you know, standing nine feet tall and weighing 100 55 pounds at five foot four. Um, so, with that in mind, I said, you know, look at Conor McGregor, a, a Roman Reigns wannabe, and of course, you know, he, he, you know, oh, be careful, Grandpa, I'll break your jaw in, in three places. You know, you know, my, my father, who was a pretty street savvy guy from the Bronx, you know, my father used to say, if. Uh, if, if you're going to hit somebody, you don't woke up and go, I'm going to kick your ass, I'm going to punch you in the face, I'm going to beat you up, I'm going to come get you. You know, you know, you know what they do if they want to beat you up? They walk up and they hit you. He's talking a good game, but he ain't coming after the wise man. And even if he did come after the wise man, what if I landed a lucky shot? Like the lucky shot he hit Aldo with, right? <laughs> you know? As Aldo was clipping, he clipped him, Aldo clipped him and busted him open on a knockout punch that he threw. Right? Got a lucky, what if I had a lucky punch on Conor McGregor? Right? What if I did? And if he beats me up, who cares? I'm a 57 year old wise man. I'm a Jew boy from the Bronx. <laughs> this is a tough fight for Conor McGregor. I don't see him picking a fight with Roman Reigns. But then again, listen, you know. Little people do what little minds tell them to do, and that's okay, because I like the little guy. He's funny to me, like a clown, you know? Like a clown. He's here for my amusement. Incredible. Thank you, sir. Congrats that's on a great it? weekend. That's it? You told me 10 minutes. You, I, I, I am. I'm in a hurry. You I gotta, are? I got to go. You got things to yeah, do. wrap it up. All right. Uh, you Paul Heyman. Hand? Well, I just... <laughs> I just came. By the way, nice suit. It is amazing. Yeah. yeah. Where'd you get that from? Uh, Dudley Hills. Tom, Tom Ford. Wow. Custom made Tom Ford. Um, Battistone shirt. Yes. And um, was it Dolce Punta? Yes, Dolce Punta tie. Phone case and, matches uh, it? Yeah, of course. Bloodline Red. colors, baby. Red. Oil. <laughs> Bloodline. Yeah, yes. We the ones. Yeah, that's right. There he is. All right. Uh, Paul Heyman has things to do. I'm Ariel. That's Paul. Am Thank I done here? Watching. We'll see you next hey, time. Hey, this is like Ariel meets, right? It rekindles? Yes. I'm the first, second time guest.